Welcome back to Stone Age Videos by Tag Team's Hobbies. Today, we're doing the Neo TRN1 Part 3 Reassembly. So I cleaned up all those pieces, and today we're going to show you how to put them back together and restore the airbrush to full working capabilities. So, let's get started. Huh, where'd that come from? Anyway, here's all our parts. Had a lot of paint build up inside the body, particularly around where the slide cam is. Really kind of surprised to see that, but uh, that's okay. It all came off. Got it all cleaned up, and I even found some places where things are wearing from pulling the trigger back and forth and the slide cam sliding back and forth. I used those micro cleaning brushes to clean out all the channels inside the airbrush. Got an awful lot of stuff out of those. And I uh, used paper towel points and that plastic toothpick to clean out the nozzle. So I got that all cleaned out. And now we're ready to put things back together and restore the airbrush to full working capabilities. Since that nozzle is the most fragile part of all the parts of the airbrush, we're going to get that reinstalled first. It's also easiest to lose. It's hard to lose it when it's put in place. So for starters, we'll put back in the head base. That just screws in place, like so. Got that good, like finger tight. Shouldn't have to use wrenches to tighten stuff down on your airbrush. Now we'll get that nozzle threaded in. There we go. And tighten that down. And just to keep from damaging the nozzle with the wrench to tighten this down, I'm going to pinch it between my thumbnail and my index finger and that should be plenty tight to get a good air seal so paint and air all go out the front of the airbrush. And we'll reinstall the nozzle cap and now we'll reinstall the needle cap. Alright, front end's done. Let's put the needle packing in, and I have to do that before I can start putting in all the action. That's the slide cam, and the needle chucking guide, and the needle spring, needle guide, and all those other great parts. So we're going to be using the 1.4 millimeter needle packing screwdriver out of the Iwata Pro Maintenance Toolkit. And this pin just happens to be the same diameter as our needle. That way, when we're tightening down the needle packing, we can make sure we put enough tension on that PTFE ring in there so that we get a nice snug seal. Not so tight that it's hard work to get it to move, but uh, tight enough so that we get a good seal. So I'll tighten that down, check the tension, and that's pretty good. Good to go. Okie dokie. That's installed. Let's go after the slide cam. So this is the slide cam. So we got two flat spots on either side here. Got these notches and then we got this great big notch. This engages the air valve. So I don't know if you can see the wear that we've got on the surface of that notch from the top of the uh, valve piston. So yeah, as this gets pulled back, it pushes down on the the piston, which pushes down on the air valve, lets air into the airbrush, and you're painting. So we don't need any lube in here, which is good. And we'll put that into place like so. Don't forget to put the spring in. And now we're going to put the uh, body ring back in. And you have to be careful here, because this is easy to get this cross-threaded. So I want to make sure when I'm screwing this in, the end of this is very parallel with the end of the airbrush body. And I got it on the first try. So I can just screw this in. There should be no resistance whatsoever. If you run into resistance, it'll happen almost right away. And don't try and power it in. Just take it out and get it reset and keep going. So now we grab our old giant screwdriver and start tightening this down. I'm going to be watching through that little hole because we want to get one of those two little holes in the body ring to line up perfectly with the middle of 
the screw, the hole that the screw goes through to hold that in place. And you can see the holes start coming by. We're going to keep turning until we get one right in the center. That's off. That's a little off still. And that's it right there. That's the one. So with that in place, then we're very carefully going to get this screw to go in there. And get my jeweler screwdriver. And we'll tighten this down. That holds the body ring in place. The spring returns the slide cam to the front position. There we go. And get that back in, and as you can see, it's good. And that is some of the wear I was talking about. That's brass. So the chrome has been worn away by the trigger moving back and forth over that. Airbrush still works great. So no problem whatsoever. All right, so we got the slide cam in place, we got the body ring in place, and now putting this back together is going to be a lot like a standard trigger airbrush. So the first thing we want to do is get this needle chucking guide in, and you notice it's got this slot. That goes down towards the bottom, because uh, so hopefully you might be able to see the tip of that screw sticking out out of the body ring. And if you don't put that down towards the bottom, you won't be able to get it in. Then we add the needle spring. We add the needle spring guide. This is not, well, you can adjust the tension on the spring a little bit with the spring guide. I usually just tighten them all the way down. Then we'll put the needle chucking nut down, and there we've got the action of the airbrush completely restored. Oh, whoops. So there we go. Nice and springy, nice and clean. And we'll slide the needle in here in a little bit. Uh, just so I don't lose that. Now let's go after the air valve and the valve stack. So I'm going to take the butt of the needle. We're going to put a little lube on that O-ring that's still in there. And we're going to use Iwata Super Lube. This is an older bottle. Uh, the new stuff isn't blue anymore. So I just put a tiny bit on there. A little goes a long way. This will get gummy if it gets wet. And that's why you should avoid getting any liquids into the air valve of the airbrush. So I'm just going to smear this around on that O-ring that's down in there. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. But it only takes a little bit. Okay, so now I'll grab a pair of tweezers. And we'll put in the valve piston. Now, the t one part of this is kind of domed. And I don't know if you can see the shiny spot where the, uh, the slide cam has polished that up as we've been using the airbrush. And the other end of this has got a little camphor on it, a little taper. That goes toward the bottom. This goes up into the slide cam. So we'll see if we can get this back in place. This goes right down in there. And there we go. All right, that's in. We'll put the retainer in too. Well, the air valve will push that down. Okay, so now we put in the top of the stack. There's a neoprene O-ring. So we can tighten this down. Finger tight's plenty good. Okay, now we put in the air valve itself. Put in the valve spring. Grab the bottom part of the stack, and we're going to screw this down. There we go. I've now reassembled the air valve. Should be good. So we can put the handle back on. And now the trigger. And the 
threaded side. This one. So we'll be putting in this pin get my little jeweler screwdriver and tighten that down super now I'll put the needle back in this is the time when people bend their needle the most oh, got it slide that in Hit a little resistance when we get to where the o-ring is just push past that and we should be able to see the very tip of the needle sticking out through the nozzle uh, hopefully you can see that too and I put the needle chucking nut on here's a very common mistake you take your airbrush apart you do a great job of cleaning it and you put the thing back together you put the needle in put some paint in there to test it and oh I broke it well, if you notice, the needle's not moving at all. So, rule of thumb, if something's not working, it's an easy fix and something you did. And the easy fix in this case is tighten your needle chucking nut. If you forget to do that, the airbrush won't work because now everything moves back and forth when I pull the trigger back and forth. So there we go. We'll put our handle back on. And now it looks like a TRN again. Ta-da! Let's make sure we did a good job. Grab a quick disconnect. Grab my airline. All right, paint's coming out. And we're going to test fire this with some Comart transparent black. A drop or two is all we need. Okay. Oop. We're back in business. Now, one other thing I want to check for, I'm going to put some cleaner in this cup. I'm using Medea cleaner to go with the Comart paints. I just want to make sure all the seals are good and I don't get any blowback. I might be getting a little, a little tiny bit, a little tiny bit. So we just got to make sure everything's tight up front. I did it. Good to go. All right, our TRN1 is working again. So we're back in business. Now see, that wasn't so bad. And this is one of the more complicated airbrushes. So that concludes part three of our TRN1 series. Special thanks again to Kirk Liebecker at Iwata Medea. He is the tech guru. If I don't know the answer, I call him. And to value customer Joe Leos, and so, hoping now, Joe, you know how to put your airbrush back together and stop that air valve from leaking. Thanks again, and happy painting from Tag Team Hobby.